All right. Um, I need to eat a snack real quick too. But um, nice. Uh, are you? Oh yeah, you're red. Okay, cool. You just get a bite to eat. Hmm. Because I've been going. What? Three hours straight. Dang. Hey, soup dog. Thanks for the sub. Do you recommend against full wall and monk defense when opening two to three stable? Uh, well, you can make siege forward, rams, mangonels. It's fine. It really depends, though. If you really can't get in, just booming yourself is good. Are you snacking them? I got a uh, melon cake from Japan. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. goes boom. All right. Um... Let's get into this. Biggest issues I have are transitioning and knowing how to close a game. All right, cool. Well, if you've only done 10 multiplayer games, there's going to be a lot of things. So uh, we will take a look at your point of view here. Okay, lumber camps in probably, yeah, definitely the ideal spot for lumber camp. The wood lines are super far away on this map. So if the wood lines are super far away, you have to be like, okay, well, opponent's also going to have super far away map. Or wood lines. So that means aggression is going to be really good. Because if you can't retreat to the TC easily, it's easy to pick off bills. And it's harder to wall when the wood lines are far from the TC too. Because it's longer walling. So yeah, going aggressive on this kind of map is very, very good. Speed it up just a little bit here. Um, so as the Britons, of course you want to be playing towards archers. Persians, their knights do plus two against archers though. So... You can say it's a bit of a counter. So you got to be thinking against Persians. Maybe you add in Pikemen a little bit earlier. If he's going full Knights, you want to add Pikemen. But we have to worry about the Feudal Age first. And Britons with the faster collecting go geese is going to mean that you're going to have a bit like a lot of resources to work with early. But Persians start with plus 50 food, plus 50 wood, and then also the faster working TCs, which allow them to get their uh, villagers up a little bit faster which also leads to more resources so i would say that the eco is going to be fairly even until castle age but then persians is going to be kind of a little bit better with the faster working um tcs but of course you have cheaper tcs as well so you know maybe that pushes it back a little bit further in the game where persian gets ahead in the economy if you add tcs as the britons so but i i would say that britons probably should be the aggressor here do Persian Knights do plus two versus CA as well? Yeah, yeah. It's versus all Archer class, so that includes Skirmishers as well. They're really good, actually. Okay. So, so far, so good. Um, I'm assuming you did a lot of practice outside of multiplayer first, because this is looking fairly solid. Only five second idle TC. Opponent is acting more like 950 with like a minute of vital TC. And you're even pushing deer. I would say don't push deer at this level. It's not worth your effort. You have so many other things to spend your mental energy on. But actually, seems seems to be okay. It's not really costing you much. But I think scouting is better. I think you should learn to scout. The only reason why high level players don't really scout and they prioritize deer pushing is because they already know basically... Or at least they don't know, but they have a very high percentage chance of guessing what the opponent's going to do based on the map and Civ matchup. But at this level, you don't really have that knowledge. So it's better to just scout and see what he's doing. So it's like you really need to know how his map looks and if he's going, say, militia opening or he's going to go for scouts or archers or even just full wall and boom, something like that. It's really good to know and pushing a bit of deer is not really going to allow you to do too much on lower level because you just won't be able to utilize that little bit of extra resources that you get. And at this point, uh, the barracks will be pretty much on time with the two bills. If you start it before 60%, you can build it with one bill. But since you have two bills out here, it should still come up like perfect timing just because, well, you'll use both bills to build that. And looks like you're going to go straight archers on 20, which is pretty fast. Pretty fast. On Arabia, when do you su suggest pushing? Well, it really depends on the player. Um, But, yeah, it really depends on if you have, like, a specific build for it as well. If you're just playing normally, 
I don't think pushing deer is really worth your, your effort. I think using your scout and thinking about what your opponent's going to do is going to be much better for improvement. So, as I pointed out earlier, this map's really big, so walling it is not actually really what you want to do. You want to make military earlier. And just resource wall everything is usually pretty good. Or, or like walling to here, make a little funnel. I think this map, you wall to here, you wall to here, maybe even to the stone and then to here. And then you have gold, wood, wood line, wood line, gold, and stone in the base. But if you wall out to here, what do you get? You get this wood line, which you don't even care about, this wood line, which you don't even care about, and all of this empty space at the cost of making a lot more walls, and the walls are more exposed, the villas are super exposed. So I actually do have a video on walling, or a few videos, so just check out my YouTube for that. Buraksam, does the replay show current ELO, or ELO at the time of game? Ah, uh, yeah, it's the time of the game, or the time of the game. So, yeah, if you gave me another replay, it would show a different ELO. Okay, gonna make archers. So you wanna hit as fast as possible with these archers. So you can go across the map with three archers and one spear. It's usually pretty good. You, you did scout the, the stable now. So you're actually we're gonna go back and I wanna see how the scouting is. So, okay. A little bit slow on the scouting. You can see that you don't really know what the opponent's doing yet. So he could have surprised you with something earlier because we're only scouting... Like, we're scouting pretty late. So imagine if he had just made some infantry and got in on your wood line, you're kind of dead. So I would say prioritize scouting over deer pushing in the Dark Age. Even at pro level, that was the standard up until recently. And now pros have just gotten so good that deer pushing is just so good on high level. But yeah. Um, and just try and use the information that you see. So... If you see a barracks coming up early, you know infantry is probably going to come. If you see him on gold, well, what are the units that you can build with gold? Infantry or archers? So it's going to be one of those two. Um, in which case, get going for a range is good. Archery range, because like archers can kill both archers and infantry. So it's just good. Stuff like that. Or if you see him making a scout, or if, if you see him, basically if you see him making a stable, when on... As soon as he reaches the feudal age, well, then you know scouts are going to come. You know how you counter scouts. You resource wall all. Resource wall here, resource wall here. Wall these into the mill. Wall these into the gold. Wall these in. And then you don't need all of these because the scouts can't kill you because they can't get into the bills. And then you just make military. Stuff like that. So you can, you can make a lot of decisions. Um... Based on the scouting. That's open and... Oh, uh, it's not open there, but yeah. Oh, he didn't see it. That's lucky. That was like two vills should have died. But he went down here. He did kill one. But yeah, this is why you have to resource wall. So this is coming back to what I was saying earlier. The base is... Or th this map is super open. So the walls are going to be big. They're going to be expensive. And it just takes a lot longer to get these walls up. So, so by the time you get the walls up, he's already in with his scouts. So... It's like, the walls aren't really doing what they're supposed to do, which is keep units out, because he already got in. So, not only did you use resources to make these walls that you could have used to make military, they the walls also didn't do anything. So, it's kind of like throwing away resources. So, on these really open maps, just think, you want to be resource walling, uh, generally. Whoa, Hoka. Good vibes on your streams. Thanks, Oka. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, actually. Um, much appreciated. Much appreciated. Thanks for being here. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Um, so we're losing a lot to this, but guess what? The opponent idled his TC for three minutes. So if you didn't idle your TC at all, you actually still would have been ahead. Obviously, him getting in takes your men mental energy away, and then, well, you end up idling your TC as well. But if you can just keep that TC running, it doesn't even matter if you take a bunch of damage early at this level. Like, you can just come back. But since you took a lot of damage and idled the TC, what does that mean? That means your economy's bad, his economy's better than yours. 
But he also lost all of his units. So what does that mean? Your army beats his because he has no army. So now's the time to attack. Because you need to do damage to him. Because he did damage to you. And you can't just get ahead by, like, sitting here with your TC. Actually, his TC works faster, so you'll definitely not get ahead. Um, he lost his army, and you didn't lose your army for that. So, now's the time to attack. Well, the time to attack was as soon as he lost his scouts. You can see he still has no army. So, imagine you went to his base. He's not even walled here. You get in with your archers. They could be in his base right now. All these die, all these die, all these die, and he's dead. So, thinking a little bit about that in terms for, like, strategy is, is really important. Um, just th the main thing to think about is when you get behind, you need to go attack to, to do damage to the opponent. If you're ahead, then you can play a little bit more defensively if the matchup is good in the late game. But just in general, if you get ahead, then make sure that your walls are tight. Make sure that you don't lose villagers to lose your advantage. Then, then kind of the advantage snowballs because you have more vills working, for example. Um, but yeah, we definitely don't want to just kind of sit at home. On this level, it's kind of okay just because, well, the opponent will make lots of mistakes. I don't the TC unnecessarily like this. So you can kind of catch up. But anyways, as a general rule, hopefully that makes sense. Now you're going to be able to go up. So I would actually not even attack here until I'm up. Normally, the opponent would be creating more military, so you'd have something to be concerned about. As we can see, the opponent doesn't have any military, so still would have been fine to go across the map. But um, there is another timing that we can wait for here that comes up pretty quickly. Uh, good to know. I think it was trying to boom. Yeah. Yeah, didn't scout enough, so you didn't know how to get into the base. Exactly. It's good that you realize that. If you had scouted, you would know where the weak points are. His main gold is here. You know about that. So he's going to want to take that eventually. And, well, you didn't scout this gold. And he has gold back here. So he doesn't actually need his main gold for a very long time. But still, um, attacking means that he can't take this very easily. So the next timing is Crossbowman and Bodkin timing. So you want to be at his base when Crossbowman and Bodkin Arrow come in and attack his walls instantly. And then... You actually do two damage per hit to Palisade Walls with Crossbowman, with Bodkin. So what you should do, ungarrison these. You need to time it so that your Crossbowman arrive here as soon as Crossbowman and Bodkin come in. And, and so therefore, you need to click those upgrades as soon as you're up. And you have your units going towards the opponent's base. And that's how you hit this timing. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that we're still ahead. But we need to do damage. And Britons is... I, I think that Persians can beat Britons, too, in the late game. Um, now with their their bonuses. Like, this Savar is a crazy unit. Crossman Bodkin, perfect. But the, the main thing that you're missing here is that your army is not going towards the opponent's base. That's the only thing you're missing. You got the upgrades in. Perfect timing. Now your army needs to be here, like right now. That's the only thing you're missing. Army is here. Boom. Vil dead, Vil dead, Vil dead, Vil dead. You kill that. You get in. And everything else dies. And then you win the game. That's how it should play out. But we're too slow. We can't, we can't go for the attack when the upgrades are already in. We want to already be there when the upgrades are in. Because now by the time you get there, he's going to have knights. Except for that he's randomly making uh, cav archers. So, all right. <laughs> he should have four or five knights for four four or six knights he should wait for six knights with plus two armor and then crush this there we go adding tcs is good though i do like that you're adding tcs it's how you improve you're gonna get much better if you learn to boom in this game so it's actually good if you want to improve you want to learn how to boom but you know, you can train eco management by booming, but you also need to train army management by doing like one TC all in sometimes too. So it's like sometimes you want to go one TC plays with big military. Sometimes you want to go um, three TC boom plays. And then you become a more well-rounded player and then you can kind of adapt to the situation. 
There we go. So, see, if you had just attacked a bit earlier, it would have been even more effective. But actually, it's still working because the opponent just decided to go CA for some reason. They remove the gold bonus too. They don't get anything for CA. I guess they have Parthian tactics, but like you just kill these. He's getting a tower, which good tower, I guess. You you could sit under the tower, but it is a scary tower. So I think that that actually is going to save blue here. That one tower. Really good play by him. But guess what? You're booming on three TCs, which is perfect. So even if your attack fails, you have that fallback plan of just booming on three TCs. So honestly, that's why you, you boom on three TCs. If you don't know if you can finish the game or, or do major damage to your opponent, you just boom on three TCs and you maintain your lead. Only reason I stand chances is because he went CA. Yeah, yeah. That's the only reason why hitting that timing wasn't as important, or not hitting the timing. You usually have to hit that timing to do big damage with the crossbone, and then kind of your guys get swamped by knights eventually anyways. So you do as much damage as you can at early Castle Age, and then you're kind of booming at home. You can make a monastery for the knights that are going to be coming your way, but yeah, he kind of just made some CA. <laughs> so lucky for you. But, I mean, people aren't going to be making the best decisions at this level. So, it's expected. Why was the mill and farms deleted? Uh, yeah. Maybe he just wanted to have a better engagement or something. But, I don't know. Sometimes you delete buildings if they're going to get in the way. But, I don't know. Okay, I think from here we just should be pretty good. Unless we make some major mistakes. Look, lots of idle TC, though. Look, We're idling. Oh, we're going to go up. Oh, you forgot the building, though, I think. Are we rush rushing up a building somewhere? Oh, I think you're getting overwhelmed here. What are we doing? We're floating like a million resources and, and I don't need TC. So, yep. I think we're not really at the level where we should be doing too many uh, like aggressive plays with Croft Bowman and stuff. Got lost in the game. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Sip Sapper. So, I think simple gameplay at this level is going to go a long way. Because you can go for just straight night like night spam with boom and it's going to be a lot easier um crossbone a lot harder to use because you always have to be concerned about these and the mental attention that is required for this battle is just too much at this level like you need to be paying attention to keeping the tcs running keeping the the uh, buildings coming up like stuff like that spending all this resources but instead we're going to be so concerned about this well maybe not but um <laughs> Well, they it died anyways. <laughs> Crossbone are just way harder to use. That's the, really the bottom line. That is still open, unfortunately. These are not very scary, though. You just make a few units and, and clean them. Here we go. Siege defense at the base. You can do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But also just Crossbone will defend against these. CA are not very good when you just have a few of them. And... Yeah, Persians do have full upgrades on them in Castle Age, you can say, but uh, they're not the optimal unit for to, to make against Britons in general, and then not the optimal unit as Persians. Um, but yeah, your your biggest issue here is really just not keeping the TC running. If you had kept the TC running, didn't have twenty second or twenty minute idle TC, that's like forty vils, right? Over forty vils. We could be on 100 vils, and the game is basically over because you're so far ahead economically. <laughs> so that's going to come up now. But now now we over the vils, which it's fine. It's better to over vils and not have to think about it than to just have it idle. So I think that it, it's kind of a good crutch. You want to eventually get out of the habit of just over vils, but I think at this level it's okay to just keep all the TCs max queued when you think about it and then just you can use your military a bit um and think a little bit more about other aspects of the game but eventually you definitely want to only have like two vils in each tc at all time queuing vils is the harder part of the game yeah it takes a long time to build up that skill but eventually you get to the point where it's pretty mechanical you should just be spamming your select all tc button Every every time that you're not really doing anything specific, you just click the select all military or sorry, select all TCs hotkey and then queue vills. Even if even if you already have vills in the queue, 
or you don't even have enough food, it's just like an automatic thing that you just do. Exactly, like HQ, HQ. All right, no, 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 you don't even, that's that's if you're going for go to TCs. The select all TCs, you just have to press it once. It's way better. Go to is a thing of the past. You should really just be using select all these days. Just get used to pressing 6v, 6v. Yeah, yeah. 6 to select TCs. Yeah, control grouping your TCs. Again, I think select all TCs hotkey is just better in general. Press tab for all TCs. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which hotkey you set it to. I use the default H and my vills are on A. So I'm like A H A A A. And that I just do that. Whenever I'm not like controlling my units or doing something specific, it's just H A A A. And I just do that randomly. And then my TCs are always queued. Have it mapped to my mouse side button. Yep. Yeah, I, I've heard that's really helpful as well. If you have some mouse buttons, you can map it to that. That's another really good one. Um, yep. There we go. Pinky pointer, pinky pointer. Yeah, like really, uh, oh yeah, it's like, ha ha ha. <laughs> exactly funny. Except for I only pr press the H once. So it's just like, ha ha. <laughs> Mine is on F1 both. Select all TCs and create. Oh, so you just spam F1 a bunch? Yeah. I mean, I guess that could work. Um, select TC, F, Q, Vils. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Could also do six and shift V. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shift selecting or shift queuing units is really good later in the game when you have lots of res to spare. Um, okay, so going for Ford Castle with military to support it. That's good. Unfortunately, the military is kind of back here, but it's a bit awkward pushing from this position because your units are going to come out this way, right? So I think if you want to push this, I think you want to take this hill. Yeah, this is a higher hill, but as long as you're on higher elevation, it doesn't matter how high you are. As long as you're above the opponent, then it's going to be the same bonus damage and damage reduction. So this hill, then you access more central of his base, like this area, and it, your units come this way. This this is just a bit awkward to push from, especially because this tree is here. So you kind of have to get the trebs on this side. I don't know. I think you're still super far ahead in terms of just everything in this game. So it kind of doesn't matter, but yeah. Let's do a tutorial about how to set hotkeys. Um, oh, whoops. No, it's... Uh, no, I can't spell on this uh, this keyboard. It's a laptop keyboard. There we go. Oh, I have my hot... Oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah, I know. I do have a YouTube video on that. Is that the correct YouTube video? Oh, no, that's like the old one. Dang. Um, I actually do have a video on hotkeys. If you just check out the YouTube channel, it's it's in here. No ledge. There we go. Wasn't sure where I should have placed the castle. Middle Hill definitely makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It does the... It basically does the same things positionally, this castle. If you have it here. But it's just better. Like... The whole point of this castle was so that you could hit this castle, right? But this hill also hits this castle, but also hits this, keeps the main gold, and hits this area. This castle controls this area, which doesn't really matter right now. So when you want to have your trebs spawn and then hit the castle, you can use the select rally point hockey. That's Because if, if you just select your castle and then right click, it'll say, oh, it's out of range. You can't attack it. But if you use the, the set rally point hotkey, then click it on the castle. Then it will set the rally point. Then when the treb comes out, it'll hit the castle instantly. Just a little tip. It's pretty useful for this specific situation. Is, oh, you got the hockey video. Thanks, old monk. There we go. Yeah, I should have a... Uh, oh, there we go. David's setting up the uh, the chat commands. That is very useful. Thank you very much. Blacksmith hockey is R. Monastery hockey is C. Castle. So on and so forth. Yeah. I, I don't think blacksmith needs to be on a single tile or a single press but yeah monasteries castle all of those military production buildings should be on a single key press i think in my opinion red unit suiciding oh, oh my god uh, yeah it happens i think red's so far ahead that unless we just don't see raids or something there's no way red can lose from here um yeah gg so you did the right play in going forward with a castle to, to hit this from the high ground. That was a good play. Obviously, this would have been a better castle, but 
it's it's like good enough. And I, I think that you are playing like at least 1,200 here. This seemed a bit easy for you. So I think at least after 20 games, you'll be 1,200, 1,300 for sure. Um, Yeah, here we go. And okay. uh, let me check the chat here. Oh, hey, Ectorino. Okay. We're going to do one more replay from Ectorino, and then we're going to uh, finish up the stream.